Hi, everyone. Now that we'll look at the prerequisites of D3, now we can dig a little bit deeper into D3 and look at what it is, uh, what it's capable of doing, and also a little bit history about D3. So a little bit of history first. So D3 started as actually called Protovis at, at Stanford. It's by Professor Jeff Hare and his uh, former student, Mike Bostock. And in 2011, uh, it's renamed to D3.js. And also Mike graduated, so now he's at New York Times, so which might partly explain why on New York Times you often see a lot of interactive graphics. And Professor Jeff here has moved to University of Washington. So very quick overview about the outline of this and the next videos that you're going to see. So we start with what I call the very grand reductionist statement about D3. So that means in a nutshell what it really is. And then we'll look at how we load data into D3. Uh, and then the very important paradigm in D3 called enter, update, exit. And then we'll look at um, more, some more specific things like uh, scales, axes, doing layout, transitions, and interaction, and also some extra information about where to go next. So in a nutshell, D3 is what we would call a very powerful for loop with a lot of useful, helpful function. So it's not a very uh, compelling way of describing D3, but it's really what it's doing. So it's really a for loop, so meaning it can do a lot of things in, uh, uh, for you automatically. And it also provides you uh, with a lot of fantastic help with functions, so simplify your life. And more technically, uh, D3, you can think of it as a, what we call a declarative uh, domain-specific specification language for manipulating the DOM. The DOM is document object model. So that means how do you manipulate HTML document, in this case, for visualizing data. When you're creating D3 visualization, the very first thing you need to do, of course, is to import the D3 library. And to do that, you will be doing that in the header uh, section and using the script uh, command. And something you might notice is that uh, here, not only are we loading JavaScript file, we also specify the character set. And here we use UTF-8. So that means we are using unique code. And you might say, why do we need unique code? So it's just text file, right? Uh, the main reason is, unfortunately, uh, in the source code of JavaScript uh, uh, for D3, uh, we have some unique code characters, such as pi. So for that reason, uh, we have to use unique code. So that's uh, a little bit of an inconvenience, but in, it's incredibly important because if you do not set to UTF-8, then there will be errors. So after importing the library, then you would want to add the visualization element. Right? So you remember from previous example, what do we need is in a container. So let's say we create a div container with an ID this. And then after that, then you can add the SVG element. So you can append SVG. So after calling the above command, like selecting first the uh, diff with uh, the ID this, and then you do append.svg, then it'll be added to the diff element as shown below. So now you're ready to load data. And as you may recall, D3 has some fantastic helper functions to help simplify your life. So for example, you want to load CSV file, you need to just need to call .csv. Uh, similarly, for a tab sep separated file or a JSON file. So something you notice here that in those function call, there are also parameter call callback. So this is where you can provide a function uh, that will be called when the file loading is done. So this may be a little uh, unnatural for uh, some of you who have never seen this uh, before. So what this means here is that JavaScript actually is loading the data asynchronously. Uh, once you call, let's say, .csv, then it will actually continue execution of your file. Um, so that means if you have a large data file, which can take a few seconds to run, so in those cases, then uh, you may want to wait a little bit until the data is done loading. And then after it's done loading, then the callback function uh, will be invoked. So the very first time that you use the uh, .csv function to call or to load data, uh, there may be some surprising thing that you run into. So let's say we have a toy data set of people. Each row is a person. And then there's one column which has age, so which has numbers. So you use the .csv function call to load this data into, let's say, JSON internal format. Then you will notice that uh, there's something is special going on. And if you have a good eye to uh, spot that, you will notice that age uh, is actually encoded as string. So it has uh, double quotes uh, around. For example, 18 is uh, quoted 
and 22 also quoted, and 30 quoted as well. So what that means is that the type is not automatically inferred correctly. And we need to fix this because they should be integers. And uh, the low tech way, uh, unfortunately, to fix it is to uh, loop through all the numbers, and then you reassign an integer version of those uh, age value to itself. So that will help JavaScript to infer, ah, this is actually a number, because only numbers can have uh, the plus sign. So this is one of the example uh, quirks that you will need to deal with when you're programming with JavaScript. So once you do that, then now we check the internal representation again. You'll see that now the numbers are correctly encoded. So once you've uh, loaded the data correctly, then the next thing you could do is to map this data to visual elements. So essentially, this, this is what we want to create, so a uh, visualization of the data. So remember how we want to do it is to using D3 is a very helpful uh, series of transformation that it provides. So as we mentioned, it is a declarative uh, language and for manipulating the DOM. So that means we want to create elements, let's say circles or bars in the visualization. Um, what we want to do is to tell D3. So declare what we want to do and then allow D3 to figure out how to create those. And at the very high level, what we're going to do is to define a template. So that means we tell D3 visually what we want each element or each number to be turned into. And then D3 would draw one element uh, for every number um, on the screen. So we'll look into more details about how to do it exactly. In this video, look at how to set up the environment uh, in D3, how to load the library, how to load the data, and so on.